Hey, what's up guys? This is Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today is day 16 in our 30 tips and 30 days video series and I'm going to show you how you can use the auto trace feature in Illustrator to turn any of your photos into cool vector art. Alright, so for this lesson, as I mentioned, we're going to be jumping back into Adobe Illustrator and I want to show you guys how you can take an ordinary photo and turn it into a vector illustration. Um, in this example, uh, I've got this uh, cool image of a skateboarder here that we're going to be working with. And all I'm going to do is first hold down the Alt key and then drag to make a duplicate of that layer. Okay, so we just want to have a copy of it. In case anything gets messed up, it's always good to have a backup. So, um, so go ahead and select your image. And then up top here, you'll see there's an option called Image Trace. Go ahead and hit OK. It's just letting you know that this might take a while depending on the complexity of your image. And you'll see right away it turned it into this black and white uh, kind of stencil, similar to a threshold effect in Photoshop. Um, but if you come up here and select the image trace panel, it'll give you a few options, quite a few options actually, um, for different ways that you can uh, produce various tracing results. So what you want to do here, you can come to uh, Mode, view, view as outlines, and all this other stuff. But then down here, there's something that says, you know, threshold, less, more. And as you move that slider around, it'll pretty much update it in real time. Okay, and then you've also got some presets up here. So let's go ahead and select uh, six colors just to see how that looks. You know, you can leave it in black and white, or you can kind of just do a, a simplified version with a few colors and it creates this cool kind of stencil effect. So once you're happy with that, you can close the image trace panel and then come up here and click expand. And what that's going to do is turn all the, the points and everything in the paths into a vector shape, right? So now you can scale this image up or down and, and it'll stay exactly the same. But one thing to notice is that you still actually have the white background here, okay? So if you want to get rid of that, just select it with the white arrow tool, which is also A on your keyboard, and then click anywhere on the white background and come up here to the select menu and choose same, fill in stroke, and then you can erase it. Okay? So now uh, you'll see there's a, there's a few areas where there's some gaps, but for the most part, you know, we've successfully removed the background and turned this into a cool uh, vector image. So now that you have that, Let's say you want to change the color of it. You know, you don't have to come in here and select every little piece and every little shape to do that. You can simply select the whole uh, vector and then come over here to your color guide. Now, if you don't have this already open, you can come up to Window and choose Color Guide. And you'll see in the panel there's a little icon that looks like a color wheel. So go ahead and click that. And now, wow, yeah, that produced some weird results. You'll see. In the left column, you've got your current colors, and then right next to it are the new colors. So if you want to, uh, you know, just keep the color you had, you can simply drag from current over to new. You know, because in this example, I don't want to mess with uh, the skin tones that much. I really just want to change the color of the sweatshirt. So um, where it says new, I'm just going to play with these sliders a little bit. You've got the hue, saturation, and, you know, balance or or anything like that. So you can really, you know, darken it, lighten it. I think I'm going to save the uh, the darker reds for the shadows here. That that makes sense. All right, and just you know, play around with it so you get something you like. And then once you're happy, go ahead and click OK. So you've now um, traced an image and recolored it. All I'm going to do from here is add a background behind it, just using the marquee tool, which is um, M on your keyboard. All right, and then I'm going to move this all the way to the back. Now, to send a shape behind another shape, um, you use uh, Command, Shift, and the bracket keys. You would use the left bracket to send it all the way to the back, or Command, Shift, and the right bracket to bring it all the way to the front. Okay, another way you can do that, I believe, is to come up here to Object, Arrange, Send to Back, and it'll actually show you the shortcuts right next to it, which is really handy. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is uh, sample a color from the image. Let's say I want to use that dark red from the sweatshirt. 
that's uh, pretty easy to do that. I can just select the color that I want to use and then use the eyedropper tool to go ahead and change it. So from here, I'm using the uh, white selection arrow, again pressing A on the keyboard, and selecting any little areas of color uh, you know, that I want to get rid of or maybe pieces on the sweatshirt that haven't you know, been changed to the, the updated colors. All right, but then here, you know, where you see, you know, the skin and everything like that, there's still these big patches of color missing, which we don't want. So all you need to do is select the eyedropper tool and sample the skin, and then switch to your pen tool and kind of trace around it to, to fill it in. And if you, if you haven't used the pen tool that much in Illustrator, I, I highly recommend, uh, getting yourself up to speed with it as quickly as possible because it's such a big part of working in Illustrator. And now, you know, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, you just want to make sure that you kind of fill in all the gaps here. You can always come back and, and refine this and, and make it perfect later. Um, but for now, I just want to show you guys kind of how this works. Same thing on the skateboard, you know, you can just come and create a shape on top of it to fill it in. And then zoom out. And you'll see in just a couple of minutes and a few steps, we've created this uh, cool kind of vector uh, stencil effect from a photograph. And, you know, this, uh, this type of technique works really well for not only photos, but also if you need to trace, you know, logos. If you, you know, say you have a flat JPEG of a logo and you need a vector version, you can always use auto trace and it'll get you, you know, pretty decent results depending on how complex the logo is. Um, but for now, you know, this is pretty much how it works, and I just wanted to show you guys that um, because it's really handy. And I just noticed a couple of shapes down here on the bottom that I missed, so I'm just going to select those real quick and, bam, fix it up. Alright guys, well, I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson and found it useful. Um, I look forward to bringing you more tips and techniques in Adobe Illustrator as well as Photoshop, um, but for now, uh, stay tuned and be sure to sign up for our newsletter and let us know how we can help you design better.